Greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is still doing well and welcome to today's bonus. Before we jump into it, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost a cent. Click that like button. It takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon, and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go, and folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump in to today's bonus, shall we? All right, guys, so today's bonuses and second half is going to be centered around researchers and their contributions to our community. Um... As a researcher myself, and I don't consider myself a YouTuber, even though I have a YouTube channel, um, first and foremost, I consider myself a researcher because I dedicate a lot of my time to looking into different things, uh, especially these unnamed animal attacks that the government, the media blame on animals. Um, I feel that there, these attacks have been labeled animal attacks, but they are not. Uh, also, the missing 411 with Tom Mezik is another thing that I am researching. Um, I don't consider any researcher out there an expert. They just have different ideas, different theories. Um, this first researcher that I'm going to share with you popped in the live stream Saturday and a lot of people didn't had heard of him but never heard him and this interview with Kirk Stokes is truly amazing he has never done an interview um with anyone after he left the community I was fortunate enough to get him to come on the show and he realized that I am who I say I am. I am not a backstabber. I don't um, ridicule somebody because my my ideas differ from theirs. And that's why Kirk left the community. He was ridiculed and pushed out of a community that he loved and truly cared about. And um, because the YouTube slash research community. His ideas didn't go with theirs and it wasn't for, you know, it wasn't views. It wasn't this. It wasn't that. They pushed him out. And one of those channels no longer exists. Um, and Kirk's still here and he's gonna, he said he's gonna come back. He said it Saturday that he will come back on the show and we'll talk about some werewolves because he's had some experiences with those. But uh, right here is an amazing interview with an amazing researcher. All right, everyone. Today I have a researcher. Um, I think he's subscribed to my channel. Actually, I'm probably sure. We're friends on Facebook, so I'm hoping that he is. Uh, Kirk Stokes is with us. He is a researcher that I have heard a lot of his... Um, research experience photos and stuff through other people i've never had a chance to sit down and talk to him uh tonight we talked for about an hour before um doing this interview we got to meet each other and know each other for a little bit and right now it's my honor to give you guys kirk stokes kirk how are you I'm doing good, Jeff. Uh, I appreciate you having me on, and because uh, it's been a while. 
since I've done any interviews. Yeah. It, I mean, it's, it's been a while. It definitely <laughs> has. I know that we've been friends on Facebook through Paul Chafin um, for a couple of oh. years now. Definitely. And um, yep. I've reached out to you a few times and you've had other issues going on. And, you know, uh, I've said it a lot on the channel. Um, a lot of it was you just kind of pulled yourself away from the cryptid community uh, because of past issues. We're not here to talk about that tonight. We're here actually to talk about your research and things that you've experienced because you know i think a lot of people would love to hear it you've got a lot of insight and you've you've spent a lot of time out in the woods uh researching these creatures so um when did you get started in the cryptid field what what brought you into it that's yeah yeah um I guess you could say what sparked my interest in it when I went public or started researching. Um, and, uh, off the bat, I was I wasn't born in the country. Okay. I was born in the inner city in Louisville, Kentucky, and that's where I grew up. Um, so when I basically got to high school I got into uh, wanting to hunt and fish mm -hmm. and I never had the uh, option of doing that my family never really hunted or fish you know um, and I never like I said being in the inner city you know I didn't have the chance to do that growing up so when I went to high school the friends I became you know, friends, buddies that I met, they more so lived in the country. So that's where I picked uh, some hunting, fishing up, you know, going out with them. And from then on, I was hooked on fishing. Okay. You know, so after high school, I still, my first experience ever, I, it's, I think it's the one I told on uh, different shows when I first came out, when I started talking about it, the incident happened in 1991. It was August. And I was either a year or two out of high school, and I still was hanging around with two of my best friends. And there was another guy that, you know, was like a buddy. And we all would go on a camping uh, outing okay. when we were all off work. And it was in August, and it was hot. And that's what I remember. I guess I was about 19 or 20. And we had planned a three-day, it was either a three- or two-day outing to Spencer County, Kentucky, where Taylorsville Lake is. And uh, when we... When we planned it, we got there, we were going to do all fishing. Like I fished for bass. Uh, one of the guys usually fished for catfish. And we usually find a place at the time. One of my buddies had a, he had an uncle or something who owned the land around there. And then we go down to the lake and I, I, uh, about, I think it was five years ago, we went and we tried to find that spot, mm -hmm. but it's all been redeveloped. Okay. Like commercially. I mean, there's not a lot of commercial, but I'm talking about it's either like vacation homes or something. Right. right. So all, all this property at the time, it was all wooded and there was, there was where we were camping. It was at the time, it was like a plateau and there was trees surrounding it, tree lines that went all the way down to the river. And so, you know, we fished that day. And when we came back to where we had our stuff, the coolers, the camp fires, we did, we weren't, we normally didn't set up tents. We would just sleep on row sacks. Okay. You know, during the summer. Yeah, yeah. And um, I know that 
and we had lanterns and we were sitting around and I don't think we brought beer that time. Yeah, I did drink beer. You know, we all drink beer right, at, yeah. at different times, but we knew that uh, some of us weren't. I don't know if, I, like I said, I don't know if I was 20 or 21. I think I was 20, but we knew that you couldn't really have it. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of the three of these guys were already planning on going to the Marines. Yeah. And I was planning on doing that, too. Yeah. You know, you get busted by DNR out in the woods drinking beers. That's on your record. Yeah. And they, you know, we didn't want to jeopardize that, honestly. I mean, we've drank before that when we were fishing, but we knew how the conservation service was there at the time. Mm -hmm. They were really strict. You know, um, so I think we, we were just sitting around and the tree line was on my right. And I had my side, I guess, where I was sitting on my tackle boxes. I had the real big tackle boxes. And I think they were sitting on these little pull out aluminum chairs. And I kept hearing stuff from over the tree line. Uh, like sticks and stuff. Like I thought it was deer, but at this time it was probably about 12 sometime after 12 AM. Okay. Yeah. So definitely not deer time. No, not really. But I, I mean, I'm not saying that I, I think I've seen deer out at night, Right. but it was just unusual at that spot. Cause we had been there, I think one other time. Um, and I forgot, we were all joking around, you know, I remember telling this for the first time, we were all just, you know, joking around, cutting on each other. You know how kids do, or yeah. young dudes do. I mean, so as I was laughing, I I heard this, what sounded like a bulldozer. I mean, that's what it sounded like coming up through that, on the other side of that tree line. And... I, I stopped because I couldn't see anything. I mean, it was dark besides the lantern. And I remember all I could see was one of my buddies' face, you know, in the lantern. And they all looked, you know, you could tell their eyes were set, you know, on what I was hearing. And um, I remember kind of turning a little bit and... The next thing I knew, I took my, I had a little bitty metal flashlight at the time. I don't know what brand it was. It was just a little, I don't know if it was a mag light. I can't remember. But I took it and I um, did a run on the trees, on the tree line, because that's where it sounded like that, that noise stopped. And I ran it across there again, and I caught what was a, uh, this, this creature that looked like a canine creature, the face, you know. Um, <clears throat> it was when the light hit the eye, the eye looked like it was as big as a softball. Yeah. And I can remember seeing one side of the face because that's, I guess it was my right looking up at its left side of the face. But where the tree line was at, it was like 10 to 13 foot where the tree line would go up and down. Okay. And it was somewhere in there where this thing had its head right over this tree line. And I, I automatically, I think I took the flashlight and I winged it at it out <laughs> of reaction. Yeah, I know. I've said that many times on different radio things, and they cut that part out, and I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, that's a natural that's reaction. I, you just yeah, I never could find the flashlight when we had gone back there. You know, I don't even know where that flashlight ended up. Right. You know. Um, so 
the next thing I know, I'm getting up. I wasn't even aware that they were there or they had left and they had taken off to go to the truck because I was just now getting up and I had turned around and I tripped over those tackle boxes because I was unaware even what I was sitting on. So your friends just weird. left you. Your friends just yeah, left apparently you. Apparently they did. Wow. You know, at the time. Yeah. I didn't know this because my heart was racing so fast. Right. And uh, uh, like I said, next thing I knew, I instinctively got up and I was going to run and I was kind of going backwards and I tripped over those boxes. When I hit the ground, it knocked the air out of me, you know. And I could still kind of make the outline of the thing out. Of the, I, I mean, I could sense it was there, what I seen on the flashlight. Right. And the next thing I knew, I was going to get up, and this thing let out a low guttural growl. Um, still in that same it, location where you saw yeah, it? Yeah, it was in the same place, I figured. I mean, you got to remember, it was pitch dark, yep. you know. Yeah, but I knew it was still there, and then it let out the growl, and I was on the ground, and that vibration hit me in my chest. And the only thing going through my head at the time was, I'm gonna come up missing. Like I'm not gonna be able to live my life. I'm like 19 or 20, mm -hmm. and this thing's going to take me, you know, cause I don't know what the heck's going on. Like, you know, I've never encountered anything like that, you know? Yeah. I mean, this, who can, who encounters that stuff? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's why not something I that you, it, it's you not know? something that you plan on, you know, encountering at such a young no, age, it, just having fun with your it, friends. Exactly. I mean, I was uh, totally, out of my wit, you know, when this was going on. Yeah. And, um, I, that's all I remember thinking, uh, I'm going to come up missing. I going to get killed, you know? And, uh, as I was thinking this, it stopped that vibration or whatever it was. Cause it, it literally paralyzed me. Mm-hmm. That was the first time I ever had an instance since that time from when I was a kid to there that I experienced where I could not move, you know. Um, I don't know if it was some kind of physiological thing or if it was something that I later researched called infra infrasound. Yep. That sometimes they say, I've talked to zoologists in the past when I got into the public research, and they said it sounded like some kind of an emittance of ultrasound or um, infrasound. Yeah, yeah. Where you're, like a, it like almost, a tiger uses or a lion to freeze prey. Freeze you, yeah, yeah. You know? Yep. Because I had no idea at the time, because I didn't discuss this with any zoologist or anything till probably about 2009. Okay. You know, I never told anybody. Yeah, yeah. I just never, I actually blocked it out of my psyche is what they thought, you know, what the professionals said yeah. on that. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Because when <laughs> I, I had my experience, I mean, I went... For the first probably year after I had it, I really was dedicated to finding whatever I could about these things, which in, exactly. 90, in 94, there's nothing, you know, that's when I had mine is in 94, you know, I was going to bookstores, you know, and, um, mm -hmm. no one to talk to. Yeah. That's all we had. Yeah. There we was, didn't have the internet. Yeah. There was no one you to know? talk to, um, except the people that were there with me, um, and then I think for, God, five, six, seven years, somewhere around there, I, I just kind of blocked it out. And then <clears throat> I was watching something on TV one night, and I saw a show, and it instantly brought it right back. And that's when 
it happened, you know, that connection. And I was like, damn. So what were your friends doing when you, did you get up or what happened after that? Yeah. After I was thinking, this is it. Like, I'm going to know what it feels like to get torn apart or (laughs) I didn't know what was going on. You know, I don't know if you can tell, but when I retell this, which I kind of try to avoid it because I sometimes go into a, a panic. Yeah. Um, but uh, when I got up, it, fi- what it, it finally let me go from that, uh, whatever that paralyzation was when I was laying on the ground. So immediately when I thought that it let go, and I got up and I just jetted off to the truck. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a barbed wire fence or a cow fence at about a hundred yards. And then there was another probably a hundred yards to get to the truck. And I don't remember going over that fence. <laughs> I mean, when I look back on it, when we went back, I don't remember going over that fence. Yeah, that's crazy. But when I got back to the truck, they were all in the truck with the doors locked. Wow. And I'm thinking, you know, I I was at the time, I wasn't, I guess I was kind of pissed. Um, Naturally. Got in the truck. Yeah, but I wasn't. I wasn't really focused on why they actually went to the truck. Right, right. I was kind of just, I was kind of numb. Like, we didn't say anything. Okay. You know, now I had all my stuff, my cigarettes. I had a whole carton of my cigarettes. I had $1,200 worth of fishing gear that we left. Right. They had their stuff. Um. I think we sat there for like 20 minutes and one of my buddies always had a 12 gauge. I'm pretty sure it was a 12 gauge, not a 20. And they always had it in the truck. So after about 20 something minutes, I needed a cigarette because all my cigarettes were down there. At that time, people don't understand when you worked for that stuff, I wasn't going to leave it. No, no, that's, that's your you money. No, right? I'm not. I don't care. I know. I think some people in the past said, oh yeah, you like, you'd really go back. Yeah. If you knew me at that time, um, you probably would understand why I did go back, you know? Right. So they didn't want to go back. I said, I went down and got my stuff and got my cigarettes and I came back to the truck and I told him, you know, if you want to get your stuff, you know, you're going to have to go down and get it. I'm not bringing it back because I kind of was like, you all left me. <laughs> yeah. You know, like you all left me there. <clears throat> like we're supposed to be going into the Marines. Never leave you a know, man like, behind. Yeah, yeah. Never leave a man. That was always what we said at lunch, you know, when we were in high school. Yep. That was the motto. I mean, we always knew that. When you went you back know? down there, when you went back to get your cigarettes and your fishing gear, um, I'm assuming this thing was gone. Yeah, it was gone. Yeah. It was gone. I mean, I there was, I was getting my stuff as fast as I could. Yeah. And I think I browsed around for that the metal flashlight mm-hmm. uh, with my lighter with my cigarette lighter and I just (laughs) didn't even, you know, because I paid good money. I wasn't, it wasn't easy coming for money even back in 90. No, no, no. I understand. I, especially being young, you know, I mean, that's your hard, hard earned Mm -hmm. money. And, you know, but like I said, I went back, I guess, Two of them went, and I guess somebody might have left a chair or whatever. I don't know that they didn't want. But we finally just got back in the truck. The dude drove. He That was his truck. I sat in the middle. We really didn't say anything, and they dropped me back off in Louisville. 
where I was living. Okay. And um, I really didn't talk about it with them. I kept in contact with one of the guys for a little while. Yeah. And I had seen him at Thanksgiving the next year. And I knew his parents and his sister, but I never, we never talked about it. Like he, one time I brought it up around his sister and he just gave me that look or like, you know, Be like quiet. don't bring that stuff up, dude. Yeah. That's basically what I, so I did it, you know, but I never talked about it. Right. You know. It, it's kind of a weird thing. Eh? When people have to tell about their experiences, man, they already have the cards stacked against them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because of the stigma on something like this. I mean, who? When, when does that happen? You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's like the UFO phenomenon. Uh, all those people that have an experience, of course they don't want to tell anything. Yeah. You know, because you've already got the the cards stacked against you. Exactly, exactly. It's it's, and I didn't. At being twenty years old or nineteen at that time, I didn't know what was going on. Right. I wasn't the smartest guy in the world. I think I'm a little bit wiser now, and I look back on the my buddies, and I don't blame them for leaving because it was a auto response. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I realized that, yes, two of them did end up going to the Marines, and uh, but I don't blame them because I might have done the same thing. Yeah, yeah. I or, to say or that. you know, or in their eyes, you know, maybe when they were running, they may have thought, you know, Kirk, Kirk's with us, too, until they got back to the truck, you know, because... They all instantly got up and took off, you know. Um, but you, like you said, you were you were flashy, you know. You were looking at this thing. You probably got the best look at it with your flashlight. So you were just kind of uh, hit, almost hypnotized. It seems it was something that uh, I had never experienced. I my mind was not full of so called chasing monsters. Yeah. Till, till about 97. I After this happened, I didn't go fishing for about, till about 95. I didn't go camping. See, I was camping heavy, and I didn't start camping again till about 95 or 97. Okay. And then I camped and I fished up until about 2008, and in 2009, I, you know, because I was working too, but on the weekends, I love camping. But it took me about five years to even go back. Yeah. Not to that area, because I never went back to Taylorsville. Yep. Until 2011, I think. Yeah, I, I when uh, I had my encounter, I just... I, I live where, you know, I had my encounter. I'm probably five five minutes from where I had my encounter. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I've had to drive by the location of it. But <clears throat> there was times I, I remember driving in the cul-de-sac where I had it uh, and not being able to stop. You know, I just r really went right through the cul-de-sac and went right out. And it wasn't Chase until Eagle. this year that I went out into the woods and brought my camera with me and showed people where this went down. You know, it takes a lot out of people. Um, and then to go back because you're almost reliving it as you're there. Exactly. Exactly. Hmm. Um, I totally understand that. You know, um, from what I know from researching more in the um, in the psychological, well after this, that it affects people in different ways. Yeah. Um, I kind of, without knowing it, seemed like it set a spark off in me yeah. in '95 to pick it up and to probably make a semi career out of it. 
because actually I started thinking I, I got my first camera in 98 I think it was my first it was a bulky big VCR beta yep like a hand shouldered one yep and I, it dawned on me if I could have got this creature in 91 which I probably couldn't at night unless that flashlight was on it you know there was no night vision that the public had I don't think um, but if I I figured if I could have got the creature like that on film that would have been crazy yeah I mean that's what was going through my mind around 98 when someone had given me a camera for like my birthday and I was like man if if has anybody ever done this? I mean, I knew about Patterson, yep. you know, Patterson Gilman and who hasn't watched that a million times. Um, but it, this was not a Sasquatch. This was like a killing machine. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's the way I first deemed <clears throat> it in my mind. Uh, when I first told that experience publicly, I think that's what I, termed it at it they asked me well what did you think and i said i the only thing i thought at that time was that's a killing machine yeah that's something straight out of hollywood yeah yeah when, because that's the only thing i could measure it to right you know when your when your light hit that creature's eye was was it because we hear a lot of times different things my when i had my encounter there was the only light that was out there was a dim orangish street light that was half glowing we saw this eye shine was there an eye shine or was it a reflective no it was flashlight? a reflective black it almost looked like I think on After Hours AM, when they had asked me that, I, when I recalled it in my mind, I said it looked like a, like if you was to wear, like a, you know how a helicopter pilot wears the black visor? Yep. Okay, and it's like got the things where, I guess on the inside of it, the updated ones, they're reading electrical stuff when they look in the lens. But when you're looking from at them, it just looks like a black lens. And if you shine a light on it, it just glances off like it's a lens. Like a shine? That's, yeah, like a black shine. Yeah. And that's what that creature looked like. Though the eye was as big as a softball. That People don't realize when I that the, the brow on this thing had to be three and a half foot long. Wow. Jesus. And then the snout, from what I saw in that moments of the light hitting it, the snout, what I thought at the time was maybe nine or 13 inches long. I, you know, um, now I, this might have been about two seconds. Right. But I, in my mind gathered a lot of stuff afterwards, you know, of when I had time to relook at it. Mm hmm. It just, the teeth were not white. So the teeth were dark yellow. Like a stain. Yeah, like a dark yellow. Yeah. Like, I, it, it wasn't white, you know, like you see white teeth. It, it looked like just a dark yellow. Like a wild animal, an animal that it, lives yeah, in the wild. Yeah. yeah, and you, I guess, and later on in life, I've seen it in bears, that have been shot. Yeah. You know, like old bears where their teeth are yellow. But yep. this was really yellow from what I remember, you know, on now, the teeth. That video that I've shared on my channel, um, did the creature resemble that creature? No, no totally no, this, different. This creature, the, the thing you're talking about, the video that you've been showing. Uh, that video was taken in Daniel Boone. Okay. Um, I've taken Paul there. I've taken five other people there. Okay. Since that, 
since that was filmed. So this was two different I, creatures. Two. Like, yeah, these were two totally different. That thing in '91 was a. It, it had to be ten foot tall. Wow. Standing either on its hind legs because I don't think it was on all four. Right. It, if it was on all four, that would make it. I don't know. 20, that would make it twenty feet. Than that thing would be a monster. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But this thing that I shot, where you have the video and you've been showing it, that was taken in two thousand four, and it was taken in August. Okay. And I was up in that area with a family member at the time, and. Actually, we had spent the night right there in that area um, in the vehicle. We did not camp. We were in a vehicle. Right. And uh, it was taken at about 4.30. It just had rained and the sun came out and it was really hot. And what I was doing when I turned the camera on, because I noticed I was getting a lot of action behind me. It was like a jungle in there, in that part of the park. Yeah. It looks uh, deep. It looked just from what? Yeah. It's thick in there. <clears throat> and in the winter, it's wide open. I've taken Paul up there and I've taken several other, I took my best friend up there even in 2018 that she's from Illinois and we stayed up there okay. all night. Um, but in the winter, it's kind of bare, but in the summer and the spring, it's like a jungle. It looks like Vietnam. I, you know? I was just going to say that because it, you can, yeah. you can tell just from when you're panning in on that creature, it, it really does it. And you can almost tell I've watched the video probably, I don't know, five, six hundred times, but you can tell that it, it had just rained and it does. It looks muggy because just by the, uh, the haze in the video. Yeah, it was hot and it had just rained and I had got out and I had in the original video, there's about another, I think there's about 50 or 43 seconds before that. And on the video, I'm counting my paces. Okay. Like, um, it's weird. I, people, you know, they'll probably say, what are you doing? And I don't know. I just, there were, I had certain ways I would do things when I was filming. Okay. To, ma to mark my spot. Okay. Like, if I was somewhere and I sensed something, that I would know exactly where it is if I numbered it in my mind. Right. I know it sounds crazy. Well, you're almost mapping. How, you're almost mapping it out. That's essentially, yeah, that's what I'm doing yeah. in my mind. So I, because you wouldn't believe how many times in the past that I forgot where exactly I was at. Okay. Because it's easy to do. Yeah. When you're in a national park, I don't. I mean, I have done that before. I totally forgot where an area was at because it's either changed or didn't look the way it was. Right. I don't, you know, because it's like forever changing or something. Yeah, yeah, no, I it's, agree. It's hard how to explain it, but that's, you know. So <clears throat> as I was filming, I was panning that area because I was kind of sensing by the, the, the sound and the crackling that something was in there. So I, I was panning it. I was looking at the area and I noticed there was something there that wasn't just there by the tree. And I don't know if you can tell by watching it, but when I zoomed in on it, I, it when I, from where I was at, I wasn't that far. It was about 30 foot from where the creature was at. Okay. And when I, See, I'm looking at it different than what people are looking at it on the video. Yeah. I'm seeing the outline of it with my eyes because I could see a lot more of it than what the camera's kind of showing. You know, like, like I'm filming it, but I'm looking at it in real time and I can see it swaying. But on the video, I can see it swaying. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if people can tell that or not. No, people have the but, people that have seen it and commented on it. They 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 can see it. It, it, it. I've had I've had a few people take the swaying for breathing. You know, um, there's one point in that video because I I I mean I when I got the video I got a minute and six seconds of it. And I then took part of it, slowed it down, and zoomed in. So now it's like two minutes and 16 seconds. There's one point in the original point or original video where I didn't zoom in, but you can see it blink its eye. And the second I saw the video, I was like, I remember my mouth, I just, the jaw dropped. And I was like, holy shit. I'm like this is this is it. This is this is the video. There's no denying that this creature is there, you know. Yeah. And you got good eyes. Uh Paul seen that when he first see I never seen that video until I had went to Paul's. Uh, unfortunately, I know everybody's going to say, "Well, why didn't you look at?" It? I only looked at it through the access of my camera. I never had the I never hooked it up to the a computer. Right, right. And, and we're P. referring to people. really quick. We're referring to Paul Chafin. Paul's been on the channel before, given uh, interview. He um, is almost kind of like your uh, your apprentice, almost. You know, he's a good friend of yours and very, um, very much into videoing and photoing um, the the woods of Kentucky. Yeah, I brought Paul on when he contacted me in 2015, uh, shortly before I had moved to Alaska yeah. and went to Canada. Um, and I think he went to Florida. And then when I came back, I think it was 2017, he had come back to Kentucky. Okay. And then he had contacted me again. Cause, and then I said, well, I said, you know, you sound like, you got a good head on your shoulders, you know, like you're pretty smart. You're a go-getter and you want to go find these things. Yeah. You know, you, you're interested in it, you know? So I said, well, we'll hook up and we'll take it from there. Right. So yeah. I tried to, I mean, he seems to have come a long way in this. Yeah. You know, yeah, he's a like good guy. He's really taken the initiative to really find out, you know, on his own. Um, and he's finding the evidence. Yep. Definitely you know? is. And I tried to sh tell him what I could, you know, about how to approach certain things on it. And he's listened, you know. Yeah. I have tried with other people in the past and they didn't listen, you know. Mm -hmm. I there's there is a there is what I there is certain steps you can take to be um I don't know how you would say it to be more productive in your research yep in your finding your evidence and um he's listened you know I mean he's a he's really good at doing that yeah, yeah, you know, and he really takes the initiative. He reminds me of what you do in your research. Yeah, you know, thank you. Be because you really, if, if people can't see that you're totally devoted to the subject that we are talking about, and it goes beyond that, they don't understand what this involves. Right. Yeah. You know. I appreciate and some that. people Thank might you. not, you know, they might not understand because if, unless you're involved in it and you're kind of on the inside of it, you're not going to know what all goes on. Right. You know? Yeah, exactly. Um, really quick. You had just, uh, you'd mentioned Alaska and when me and you privately talked for that hour, um, I kind of wanted to ask you, um, you went up to Alaska. Were you did you go up to Alaska to do research or? Yeah, it was research. And at the time I had uh, married and I had moved up there. Okay. And uh, 
the the woman I had married, unfortunately, I'm not married to anymore. Um, but she was also involved in the research. Okay. And um, I took a lot. I took a lot of film out of Alaska. Really? Wow. Yeah, I shot a lot of film of a lot of creatures. Now, but the. It was a lot of squatch. That's what I was just going to ask. I was because when when you think of like Alaska or you think of the Pacific Northwest, um, you automatically think Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Sasquatch. Um, but if there's Bigfoot and Sa- you know if there's Bigfoot, there's usually a number of dogmen as well. Um, and they're there. Yeah. They're there. I've seen them. I've seen. I've seen them twice in Alaska. I've seen the dog men in Alaska. Okay. Um, unfortunately, I did not film them at the time. Right. I, I mean, one was a quick glimpse. Uh, it came out of the brush, and made itself present, and it was right back gone into the brush. Yeah. yeah. And... Uh, that was unexpected because at that day I was, we were not looking for anything. We were just, I was actually doing some work, you know, like some yard work. Okay. I was actually shoveling, I think, pea gravel or something, you know. And, um, and there was another time when we were driving and I think it was, I don't know if it was Cook's Outlet up in Alaska where the ocean is. Like, I I forgot if it's called Cook's Outlet or Captain Cook. I'm not really familiar with it. Yeah, I'm not. I just can't remember what the park was called. But I witnessed what I I know to be a canine uh, cryptic creature. Uh, the rest of it was Sasquatch that was either around where I was living, where I was staying at the time, and where we hiked, where okay. we knew that they were already there. Right. Because the footprint evidence that I took, the actual videos I took of some, it, it was just predominantly Sasquatch. Yeah, yeah. You know. How long, um, what's your, what's your... I, I've said it many times on the channel when I talk about Bigfoot um, and things because people have like this perception of Bigfoot, you know, being the uh, you know guardian of the forest and and Harry and the Hendersons and you know they're a dangerous creature. Did you ever have any kind of like uh, you know an experience with? a Bigfoot where you felt like you were in trouble? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, Yeah, I've known a lot of people that I know that they they are truthful because I've seen their evidence and Mm -hmm. they've invited me to share in it. And uh, some of these people are, are the people, like you just said, they believe that the Sasquatch are or their big brother. Yeah. Uh, some of them were native American and I respect that because that's might've been what they were experiencing. But I myself have had two encounters in Kentucky, uh, in the early two thousands where I was deep in the other side of Daniel Boone, closer to the Tennessee side at the time with a friend with a girlfriend and I was trying to get film and we had a stump that was about five to five and a half or six foot long that probably weighed about 300 pounds. I'm not for sure, but it was thrown and it was thrown a long distance and it landed maybe 20 foot from this, you know, I mean, this tump came out of, from nowhere. Right. (laughs) Now there's nothing else that could have done that. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing, 
that I know that I've experienced and I, from doing research way before that, I knew that that sometimes is something that happens. That's um, because I, I recognize the call, the scream that came before that. Mm -hmm. And what else is going to throw a stump like that? I could hardly pick the stump up on one side, you know? Yeah. They're exceptionally strong. I, I just, through things that I've read and put pieces together and just, you know, obviously if it's that big, you're going to know that it's strong, but it's almost uh, almost a super human, or not super, like superhero strength. It's an unimaginable strength these creatures have. Yeah, it's it, if you've been around it and you know from research, um, if you've been around it, you know exactly what does that. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't want to embellish anything, and I never do. And some people, when I say that the stump came out of nowhere from where I was standing was an open field and probably, probably within 40 or 45 yards, it, it was wooded. So it came out of there. So you tell me what could have thrown it. Yeah. yeah. Now, was it many, was it meant to hit us? I don't know. I just know I didn't like that area to begin with. There's some areas where... It seems like after 91, I can sense certain things. Yep. I'm not saying I'm superhuman or anything like that. But I've always been open to, I believe, your mind. If your intent is strong enough <clears throat> and you're looking for something, that you will find it. Yeah. You get that sometimes feeling. Sometimes maybe that's not good either because... It'd be careful what you wish for. Exactly, exactly. You get and, you that know, That's feeling. what I found out, you know, yeah, yeah. on some of this. I did uh, the video when I was up at, we talked about this at, when I was up north in the Adirondacks, um, when I was at where Tom Mezick disappeared, and there's a video of it that I, you know, I had been up there a bunch of times prior in this one spot, it's, it's, you know, I, I made it a point to, to, you know, upload it and talk about it because you can see my whole demeanor change. Like, and it wasn't, it wasn't just, you know, and then once I left that area, it slowly got better, but I felt like I was in danger. You know, it was yeah. just like, yeah. and you look and around. Yeah. It's bad. Yeah, and that's there for a reason. It's there to protect you. I, I really think humans have this untapped ability everyone has a psychic ability i don't you know that's my belief because i've seen it i know it works um but everyone has it they we just aren't taught it right and mm -hmm. sometimes experiences i think bring it out tremendously i think what i got hit with in 91 it not only caused me problems, but it enhanced things that I never knew I had. Yeah, it opened your mind a little more. It, I think it did. I mean, it had to. Yeah. After that, I, I, I in, in 91, I didn't, like I said, I didn't start going back out camping or fishing until about 95 and 97. In 97, I had my second experience, which I think I towed before publicly when I had, it was in the spring of 97 and a guy I used to do contract work for, his name was Teddy and he was a contractor. And at that time I never owned a boat or anything. So, so when someone offered me to go crappie fishing, mm -hmm. you know, I jump on it. I mean, if they're going to drive to, you know, the Western Kentucky, I lived in Louisville. So, you know, of course, if I wasn't working, I would go. So we ended up going and it was supposed to be for like two days. I guess we might have been planning on sleeping in the truck. And um, we were fishing the shallows because he had some kind of a bass boat. And I'm not versed on a lot of boats. But, you know, because I never fish in boats that much. Right. And um, we were at mm. night, and he had a spotlight with him. And it was a pretty big one. 
Um, and he was shy. I took the light after he was done with it. I was just kind of curious because as I was kind of float fishing and bringing it back in, using a pop or a small one, I think it was, um, I started hearing like breaking, like stuff stepping on the dead wood and driftwood up in the, you know, going off of the lake where right. it went up a really deep incline and I took the light and I was shining it and out of nowhere, this thing that was a two legged bipedal, um, what I describe as uh, a type of a dog man with two arms, two legs standing up like a Sasquatch and it was probably about six foot tall, but it had huge forearms. And when it looked in the light, it didn't hold up its hand, you know, to block the light. It just stared at us. Like when I first caught it in the light, it looked like it might have been looking for stuff under the driftwood. Like, you know, at mussels or something. I don't know. Right. You know. But it just stood there, and I was thinking, you know, at the time, again, I was thinking, if I had a camera, what the, f- you know, like, with it, this thing is right here. <laughs> and Teddy, of course, he's strictly no BS, you know. Right. Very logical. Didn't say a word, you know. Didn't I just, I remember glancing at him and, he was just like looking, you know, like he didn't, he didn't look at me or nothing. He's just looking straight ahead at what I was looking at. Right. And I just couldn't believe it, you know, again, but this was, this was an actual bipedal. It had a short snout. It had two pointy ears. It had little white hairs in the ear. Like it had white in the ear okay. itself, like a bobcat. Right. Wow. And I think I do remember telling this on a couple of shows on as being my second actual sighting where I could plainly see it. So it finally just turned around and started to walk off, you know, into the it eventually walked off into the darkness where I couldn't spotlight it anymore. Mm. And uh, that was my second experience from 91 uh, that I had of a solid sighting. Yeah. You yeah. know, but I didn't feel at the time when I, I didn't feel any anger or nothing. Okay. Like I didn't feel any danger. Like it was and more so, of a curious, it was doing its business. Yeah, you it were doing like yours. I'm, I'm sitting here watching this thing that nobody's that I known has ever seen. And I'm thinking, you know, not at the time, but later on, I thought we're the probably maybe the only humans who have seen this particular one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, I, yeah. Like, what's the chances of that? Like, does this have something to do with, like, my first experience? You know? Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't have answers for that. I just know that. You know, it happened, and I seen it, and he seen it. And he was with me. And I'm not crazy, right? But if I had a camera, what a shot that would have been. Yeah, you know. But the, we didn't. I don't think I had my first cell phone till 2001. Honestly, okay. it was either in '99 or 2000. Because I know it wasn't before the tax in. 2001 of September. I know I had a cell phone before then, before okay. 911, you know. Yep, yep. And, uh, wow. And, uh, I mean, it was, it was, it wasn't big. It wasn't like dominantly big. It was, like I said, about six foot tall. But I could see that the forearms and the, the calves were huge, you know. But it didn't, 
it was like the light didn't bother it. It didn't do like a person would do where you hold your hand up to block the light know, out of the it. light. Yeah. yeah, it was what's not bothering it whatsoever. Hmm. That's and, um, crazy. Well, I mean, to see it in that good a position with the clearing on that shore and to think it just moseyed along like it wasn't scared of anything. Right, right. But I didn't feel anything. But some people say, well, that's because you were on a boat. Uh, no, I probably I, would have picked up something. You know, yeah, like, yeah. I think I more or less boats. it was a chance encounter and, you know, it was doing its business and... You know, it, it was just like like you said, it, it was maybe looking under that wood for some, some you know, opportunist dinner or something, you know, like just. That's what I thought. I mean, this was probably, I think it was about, it might have been about one in the morning. Mm. It might have been 1230. I, you know, I, it was sometime around there. I know we got there late anyway. Yeah, yeah. And that was a season. I think we had flooding that year too in Louisville. If I can't remember, it was the '97. I'm pretty sure it was '97. It was a year when I think there was a lot of flooding in Louisville. Okay. If I can't remember right, you know. Now you've your research has stemmed behind cameras behind video behind photo um the main or one of the biggest things when it comes to video or photos is those people who are like is this the best we get was this taken with a with a potato you know um oh yeah what do you think what because you've done this for so long, been standing behind that camera. What do you think the reason is that the video or photo doesn't come out as clear as you see it with your own eyes? That has, I've, I've looked at that many times, what you just suggested on the, you know, why that is. Mm-hmm. I've uh, heard many explanations. I mean, I, you know, I'll come off the top right now and say that I've been privy being in the research uh, since like fully since 98, I would say like semi fully into it until now. And I've seen a lot of private photos. I even have videos of myself. Okay. I have plenty of videos. I have stuff that um, is really, really clear. Mm. Um, I've seen pictures that people have taken, and they're legit photos. They're legit videos, and they are the clearest dang things I've ever seen. Now, you'd have to ask them why they've never shown them. A lot of them say that they don't want to get involved. But I have seen the clearest right. that I've ever seen. These videos and photos are often, from what I know, are all they're often sewed <clears throat> behind the scenes. And just yeah, and just in, and in a they private collection. Yep. Because I don't see them, and I I'm saying this because I'm coming off the top and I'm telling the public what I know on that. Right. Right. Because I know myself. That's not the first that I, time that I've heard that. You know, I Tim Baker told me the same thing. That he's, really? Yeah, it's... Um, there's a photo that was taken while he was camping with a bunch of his, you know, fellow researchers. And um, he, he said, you know, his own words, I'd like to know where that photo ended up. Mm-hmm. You know? Exactly. Uh, and a lot of times, now I'm not... Um, this is partly speculation. Mm-hmm. Um, I would think that there's sometimes NDA signed on it when you take cash for a photo. Mm-hmm. And no matter how bad that person might want to say, they cannot, they're not obligated legally to say. Once you sign an NDA for money, 
and you sell something, you're not allowed to talk about it. Right. It's, it's like a contract, you know, yeah. a non-disclosure agreement. Yeah. But it, what I know, it, this is what I know that a lot of times the videos and pictures do get sold and there's an NDA possibly signed and those videos and photos will go away. <laughs> Speaking of photos, um, you, know. you sent me a photo. You sent me a photo and gave me permission to share it. Oh, yes. Um, what's the story behind this photo? The one with where I have my name on there. Yeah. yeah. With the trademark. Yep. Um, that photo came out of a video that I took in 2015 in northern Kentucky in a park. Um, I don't want to say the part, right? Um, but it came out of Kentucky. It came out of there when I was back trailing out of there shooting video. Um, not when I was going in, when I was coming out and it's on, this is a frame, I think 284 taken out of the original video of that four times. Okay. The, the one I'm showing, which I think is a pretty good video. In the video, it's kind of a fast video in the in the mainframe in the regular speed. But when I slowed it down to get a bit a, a better quality definition of it of this this one, this might not be the best definition. Right. I think I have some more that are clear in a certain speed frame. Okay. Uh, that shows a little bit more detail, but it's a pretty good picture that I haven't readily shown publicly. Yeah, yeah. And thank you and, for allowing me to share it with people because, you know, like you said, it's it's one of those photos that you haven't shared often. I think it's a pretty good one. Yeah. The video is, I think, just as good. How close were you the, to the creature? I was on the trail. I, w I was actually on a marked trail, and I was doing a back back out mm -hmm. where I back out, walking backwards, filming because I I picked up on the fact that they're always there watching. Yeah, when you're got your back turned, so I usually walk out backwards <laughs> right right yeah yeah because it was working for me i was catching a lot of stuff like that at one time yeah that's probably um, one of the best ways to do it you know it's uh they're they're not they they can't get the jump on you and you you're catching them as they're looking at you because they're so used to people walking back out of the you know area the norm you know the right way not walking backwards <laughs> Well, what I believe this was, was a type of squatch. I don't think it was a dog man. Mm -hmm. No, I don't know. I mean, I, when people look at a picture and we say that's, I think that's a dog man. We don't have scientific chart of, we don't. Right. I'm not saying there might be an agency yeah. that has uh, a chart that they've already documented a species. Right. We don't, we're not privy. I'm myself not privy to that. I'm only privy to the information that I've got and the photos that I get. And the, but I can't scientifically come out and say that is a squatch. That is some creature that is undocumented. Yeah. It, what is on that picture. When I that, saw that, I was like, I, I kind of, I was like, whoa, that really... It almost, the photo almost looks like um, a gorilla, kind yeah, of. Yeah, it does. It almost, uh, you know, um, but it wasn't. But but not I like mean, but not like the silverback gorilla. It almost has like a mandrel face. You know, it's got a exactly. very long face. Well, it almost looks, to me, what I thought it looked like. If you look at the, the work that Grover, Str Grover Stance, 
did. Is that my saying that right? I think so. The guy who did the research from Oregon back in the 70s up until the late 90s, and he did a lot of the footprint work. And the he casting did a lot and of, stuff? Yeah, yeah, and he did a lot of work with the Gigantopithecus skulls. Yep. To me, that almost looks like Gigantopithecus. Yeah. Blackie. Yeah. Yeah, it's what very... the, the scientific name. But I don't know. I can't literally. What I'm saying when we show photos as researchers, your best just to say what I say now is that is totally an undocumented animal. Exactly. exactly. Because I can't literally say. I can say to my best knowledge, from what I know, that might be a dog man or a squatch, but I don't truly know. Mm hmm scientifically i don't i mean we really don't know what these things are we know nothing you know we, we call it a dog man because it's exactly. got ears exactly. and a snout Just, but exactly. who's to say it's even got canine gen dna in the damn Ex thing exactly and i just want to be honest that's why i'm trying to explain that and i respect that I, yeah because i will never i don't want to i never wanted to come out in the public ever from the get-go and say this is what i got i'm the you know i can't do that yep. i just want it from the get-go i really just wanted to show what i was seeing yeah from the time in 91, I couldn't understand what the hell happened. I didn't know what traumatic stress I had been through. Um, you know, I mean, it still gets to me. Yeah. You know, I, it, until you've been in that situation, and I don't know, maybe a lot more people will. Maybe I, it's unfortunate why, why I'm on the topic that some of these cases that happens to these people these like campers hikers or even children that a creature would possibly be involved in their disappearance to me that has always been something that's very upsetting to me personally yeah because if you think about it here i am and i made it part of my life looking for these creatures and you know i mean good golly i mean how horrifying if some of these creatures are taking people i mean think about it I mean, that's crazy yeah i think you know I, I, and definitely it's think a they hard are. subject to deal with it is it, it's it kind of when you're on the kind of the inside of the research and you you there's some things that i don't talk about yeah you know there's some people who have come to me and they wanted information of what i knew about something well you know there it, it's it happens in every career if you're if you're privy to doing the work and researching there's going to be people that come to you yeah you know 100 percent. you know that right. i mean you you've done a lot of deep tracking research i know this because i've watched yeah and when you're when you're kind of a, a lifelong researcher and you can you know what it takes to get the information you can look at anybody and when they claim to be investigating, you know, the clues just by knowing. It. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. we talked about privately, you know, it was, it's uh, it's something you just, you can sense from that. Yeah. You know, what, what you've done or what I've done or other researchers have done. And, you know, you can feel that, um, you know, one one thing that I've always and I always say this on the channel is that there are no experts in this field. Like I am exactly. constantly learning from from people, from subscribers, you know, uh, just talking with you. I'm I've got about a million different ideas in in things cooking in my head like well, i wonder this i wonder that now you know and that's i think that's probably one of the greatest things about 
this science. It's, you know, it's a science based on theory. And you can't prove theory right or wrong. Exactly. Exactly. So. That's uh, well said on that. I, um, I just, like I said, I've always wanted to come off from the get-go, non-embellishing. Yeah. I'm too, I'm getting too old myself to, I, I really don't want any kind of public spotlight on anything. Yeah. I got to where I purposely got out of this research, um, and we talked about that a little. There was a lot of going on with me personally, but at the same time, a lot of things since I started a public research, I got really deep into it. Yep. And I can't really talk about a lot of the stuff that the personal experiences where you might get certain threats yeah and those threats might not just come from individuals no if, i agree 100 if i'm saying that right you are I don't, you are you know and i i backed out of it pretty good yeah you did you know you i did. i think i've known some people to get really deep into it it seems like if you cross a certain line you're you're basically warned yep. in ways, okay? And uh, I mean, I'll be honest. I know some stuff that I don't talk about. Mm -hmm. I just won't ever talk about. Um, and I don't think if people knew the situation, I if they understood it, they probably would say, "I hey, don't blame you." Yeah, exactly. You know, I I really think if you look at it from that mature approach. That people would understand why some people totally disappear out of this uh, research. Yeah. yeah. Like out of choice. Like they've had enough of it. Yeah. It is. Like we're fine. Like I'm fine with not like this. If this was my last interview and I decided I probably won't give no more, I, I might come back on here. Yeah. Like, you know, that'd be awesome. Um, and especially if I decide to start putting up new videos that I have decided in the past that I, for whatever reason, I decided not to make public at the time. Yeah. And I decide to make them public. I'll probably come back on here, but I don't want to get back in. I'm fine with doing the private research. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. And I, 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 I mean, I you know, not everything is a conspiracy. I, I, I agree really with that 100%. It's not all conspiracy. There is just, there's things that just occur naturally. And, you know, it's, but there are those lines that, that when crossed, sometimes there's, there's not, you don't come back, you know, and you just shut up and, you don't share certain things and yeah, I agree with you a hundred percent on that. And I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I just thought I'd kind of try to clear that out without, cause I know a lot of people, I've seen a lot of people from different, um, areas in the research that were in public. They, they throw out these questions and, and it's sometimes it's to these well-known investigators and a lot of times they will not answer anything about nothing. They won't try to explain it. That's the best way I know how to explain why yeah. that certain videos and certain pictures never make its way to the, you know. Or certain then, information. Yeah, certain information, especially on cases where, unfortunately, people come up missing. Mm-hmm. Yep. And like I said, I, I don't know a lot. I I know a lot in my research, and I know a lot about what I think these creatures, where they are. Yeah. And I'm like 50 to 100% sure at any time I can, I'm going to know where they're at. But I don't, like when it comes to the other stuff, that information for whatever reason, I mean, they do it with a lot of stuff. I, you know, sometimes whoever's controlling this, they just don't want the information out. Yeah. Exactly. You know, exactly. I don't know what else to, you know, yep. but 
what, like I said before, what really is baffling and scary is the, you know, the people, if these, if some of these creatures are involved in some of this stuff, it's, it, to me, it's disheartening. Yeah, it is. You know? It is. It is. It is. Uh, I've never, it's I've terrifying. never had a problem <laughs> with that myself like other than when i have the the times when a stump was thrown yeah you know i i mean i i look at myself and when i was a lot younger and i was going out staying out for four to five days with no tent and i only maybe had it sometimes it was just me but the older i got i started taking other researchers because yeah. i started getting worried because these cases started coming now getting really about bad. people yeah. disappearing now and then people say well what you've done this most of your 20 almost 27 years now and you've always come back i don't know why you're lucky it, yeah, wasn't, your it wasn't your time. I, exactly. It wasn't your time. It wasn't your time. Because there was many times, many, many, many times. I can't even count how easily much of a target I would have been. Mm -hmm. I mean, really. I mean, to be honest, I would have been a target many, many times. Yeah. You know. Yep. Now, do I go unarmed now? No. No, no. I, I, I've i heard people, and I've heard Robert Morgan, the, the Bigfoot researcher from a long time ago. I think he's still alive uh, somewhere on the West Coast. He always used to say that if you take a gun, it's like an iron teddy bear. It's not going to help you. Yeah. But, I see, I've known cases personally where they told me it has helped them. In yeah. a situation, you know, so I'd rather have a gun. I'd, exactly, I'd rather have it you know? with me than not yeah. have it with me. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and I think there's a lot of uh, you know, we're coming up on time, so we're gonna have to end the interview. But you know, there's there's that that um, where people say, you know, uh, all, when you go out in the woods, all you need is is a prayer. You know, well, I'm not going to rely. Prayer is, prayer is nice. Prayer is beautiful. Prayer, prayer is something exactly. special. But if I've got a 9 to 10 foot creature in front of me, I'm not going to want to rely on the Our Father itself. I'm going to want something a little extra. Exactly. You know? I mean, I, it worked. I'm being honest, yeah. That's the truth. Um, I was always, uh, I never, the reason why I say that, like I said, the, the more I got into the research, the more I started learning about the stuff that you're probably specializing in, which is exposing these missing or cases or these people who unfortunately came across some bad instance yeah. that aren't here anymore. And in most of those cases, from what I know, and I haven't touched it as much as you have, believe me, I found out a lot of them aren't carrying guns. No, 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 they're not. They're not. You they're know, just... and then they're, you really, a lot of them aren't woodsmen. No, they're not. They're just, you know. they're blindly going, they're blindly going to a place that they shouldn't be going. You yeah. know, um, they have, they don't have the, the, knowledge you know just a little bit of knowledge going out there you know and not think exactly. you know it's these people that don't think about something other than you know a deer or a raccoon living in the woods you know there are things out there that will hurt you it doesn't have to be a bigfoot it doesn't have to be a dog man you know there's other things out there that are just nature you know like Thanks. Exactly. That's a good point because I, I think I, the last interview I gave, it was in 2016. I think it was after ours AM, um, national radio. And they brought up that question. I, I said, you know, I don't discourage anybody, um, from going out and doing this. Yeah. I, I'm not one of those people to say, Oh, you can't do it. If you want to, you're an adult, go do it. Yeah, yeah. Because that's the only, I think, the only chance that you're really going to have 
proof is by seeing it with your own eyes. Yep. Because all the videos in the world, there's going to be a doubt there. Yeah, there's there always, always going to be is. someone that's going to doubt it and troll it and, you know, but like... And, and that's why, now I don't know if you remember, I know you said we're running out of time. Time's gone so quick here. Yeah. Uh, I kind of really got into this. I didn't think I would like <laughs> talking again. This has been fun. I, we've got, yeah, we've got some time. It kind of rejuvenated me a little bit here. Yeah, I'm glad. You I'm know? really glad that, you know, I hope I am this, too, because I dreaded it. Because to you me, know? you you really have a lot to offer the community, you know, Um what you can share and what you're willing to share is a lot, you know, and I think the community has grown um, to a point where, you know, uh, what you shared 10 years ago, people haven't heard that and people really need to hear it. You know, people need to, um, you're a seasoned researcher, you know, uh, that has a lot of a lot of time and information um, that's beneficial to people and could save lives. Yeah, and that's uh, the older we get. Uh, I mean, it's and I wasn't no calling much. you old when I said seasoned. I no, just seen and it. I I realize I am getting a older. That I can't do what I used to do. Yeah, I can't climb these hills anymore. I can't do it. Um. I, I'm trying to make a comeback on it. Um, but what I always would tell people was you're free to do it. Go do it. Yeah. Um, but just be careful of your surroundings because like you said, it might not be some <clears throat> cryptozoological creature right. that gets you. It might be a tick or a spider. Yeah. Something... I have scars all over my body from 20 years of spider bites and tick bites. Mm -hmm. And the last tick bite I got messed my life up. Yeah. yeah. It really did a loop on me for something that I can no longer, I don't want to play sad Sal. I'm just saying right. I brought that on because I went out there and I, I wasn't aware of that. And when I contracted a disease from a tick bite, I could no longer eat any meat. Yeah. Or it would kill me. Yeah. Yeah. And that's... this is going on for about eight years. It, does, it was so high of a dose that I don't think it'll ever leave my DNA. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, and and they don't know much about, you know. That's something just... that really you have to offer right there is, you know, how many people, like, okay, we just talked about going out in the woods with a firearm or a prayer, you know, and I, I yeah. always do. I always do say, you know, I'll say, Hey, when I go out, when I, especially when I go where Tom Mezick disappeared, please watch out for me, you know, let me get home to my daughters. But there's, there's something else, you know, with me to make sure that I get home. But how many people think about that, that tick bite, you know, um, yeah, I never did. There's I never always did until it hit me. Precautions you know? that you need to take, certain precautions. Wear long pants. Um, you know, have bug spray. Just Definitely. think about all of the dangers that are out there besides the dog man, besides the Sasquatch, you know, besides whatever else is out there. There are other things that just exist, you know, naturally that we are aware of. You know? Exactly. And you never know. You never know who you're going to run into. Yeah. Yeah. In you might run world. into some person I, or people that live in the woods. Yeah. I've, I I can't say who it was. I, I was one time in 2014 with a camera crew in, in Daniel Boone and we ran into some people. Feral people? And it, it, no, it was people probably doing illegal stuff. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And there was, um, it, it got pretty dang scary. Yeah, I can the imagine. state police had to be called. Yeah. And uh, we weren't expecting that. I mean, it's, you know. No one is, you we know, were, that's something you that's... Know, we were just shooting film. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but that was an, an eye-opener. 
when I started carrying, you know, because yeah. uh, out there, anything can happen. I, the last, I was out for about a year just recently. I took a fall in the woods mm-hmm. filming and I hurt my back bad and I was in therapy for quite a, it was a while, Yeah, you know, and, um, it's, you never know. I mean, I was walking in the dark, so and I fell, yeah, <laughs> down an embankment. You know, and it just—it's—it's it's crazy. You know, you never know. You got—you got to be the right there. Perfect example of being aware of your surroundings. <laughs> definitely, definitely, yeah. and it's just—I mean, and it, it's just a yeah. It's just I don't want to discourage anybody from doing if they want to get into this go do it that's what i was getting ready to say that's i don't know if you heard of ddos um now we started oh I, it was back in 2015 the bdrp channel yeah and um that's one thing that we had decided on we weren't going to discourage anybody yeah we wanted everyone in the community to have a part in what we were doing just take you know. precautions yeah and just you know because man it, once you get out there in some of these national parks you don't have cell phone service unless you have a transponder which cost about i think what five thousand dollars yeah or something to that effect a lot of people don't i never had that to that buy is- that so if something happens you're pretty much on your own. You're and so even low. in today's yeah. time, if your cell phone don't work, you might lay there and die yep. from a broken leg or a snake bite. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't take much, you know. Exactly. I had a spider bite from being out for about a week in 2003, and I almost lost my leg from the thigh down from the spider bite. Yeah. And uh, it's just, you never know. And that, you know, and that's like I said, I asked for it because I wanted to do the research. But that's just some of those things that you don't hear about. No, you, know, you don't. I don't no. know what kind of spider bit me. The, the doctor crew didn't know what it was either. They just know that my old leg was infected yeah. after about a week when I got back. You know. I I mean that's just some examples, you know, exactly. of other than what the unfortunate thing with cryptids. If that's what, and uh, you know, I believe that some cryptids are involved in some of this stuff. I, you know, yeah, I do believe they are involved in it. I I don't have per se firsthand proof, but I would think that they are the cause of some of it. Yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. You know, and I don't know if you found that in your investigation. I, I, yeah, I think that there's a portion of these things that cryptids are involved, and then there's a portion that just don't pertain to cryptids that, you know, people, people want to add a story to, you know what I mean? They want to involve a cryptid when it's, it's really, um, you know, some, pot growing guy that's out there that wants to protect his crops or you know yeah, some exactly. some other bs stuff so listen um we're about an hour and a half in um i, wow. I want to talk to you for a few minutes after so don't hang up um but we're going to end the interview is there anything that you'd like to say to the audience before we end this i just uh like i said this is the first time i've been publicly talking since about 2000 and maybe 16, I think. Mm-hmm. And I hope I've answered some questions without being too, uh, um, confined. You know, you I, I hope that I've been understandable. Definitely. Uh, yeah. and I came across, you know, honestly, cause mm-hmm. that's, what i gotta do yeah you know? exactly kurt and this I, has been I, awesome I, every, <laughs> well i appreciate it and like i said to begin with i appreciate that you uh understood my research you know yeah. what i tried to do um what i'm trying to do 
Um, Because I don't think I, it's not about money. No. It's about, I just wanted to show people. Exactly. And sometimes some people aren't satisfied with it. And sometimes it might be better than what you think. And other people or other groups might not like it. I don't know. I just know that I'm just coming to present, yep. you know, present what you experienced and what you, what, what you, uh, what you know. And I appreciate that. I really appreciate the fact that you, that we had, I had a lot of fun and I'm glad that this interview was a positive experience and that now you it might have lit a little fire under you to 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 get back out and you know share some more um if not that's still awesome i'm glad that i was able to interview you because it's it's been uh something that i've wanted to do for three years now and i'm glad that i was able to come on i i honestly didn't want to i in 2000 not because of the show or i don't like giving public interviews anymore i just there's a lot of stuff that happened where oh people somebody asked me not too long ago if you had this to do it all over again would you do it and i was like no right i wouldn't touch this subject (laughs) i hear you i hear you there I mean, honestly, I, I, me myself, I wouldn't do this again. No, no, I, I, I agree. There's I mean, there's that... a part of me that loves it, but there's so much stuff that goes on behind the scenes with stuff that's happened that it can be traumatic. The research is you know? amazing. The research is amazing. <sighs> Doing the research is amazing, but the drama that goes along with it or that shouldn't go along with it is what kicks what really irks me and there are days that I just want to be like um is it worth it and then for some reason I'll talk to somebody or I'll just you know think of something and it you know puts it into perspective that yeah it's it's it doesn't have to you know that's why I tend to just do my own thing you know um yeah and I think you're doing pretty good at it um you know, from what I've seen, I, I do keep up with your channel. I don't a lot of times have time like I used to, to just go through gobs and gobs of information. Right. Um, but I do watch it. I, I do, I do keep up with what people say and all of that, you know, but I, I no longer keep contacts very much in Facebook or answer a lot of questions. Um, I used to take a lot of reports and I still do get people that have questions. If it's basically on a scientific research uh, professional, I gladly answer it. But if it's some drama or something, I don't got time for that. Yeah. You know, I don't got time strictly like you are investigative professionally. um, And honestly. Yeah. You know, that's the only thing that matters. Is that's the, the only thing that stands the test of time, because once people deal with you, if they know you're not being honest and they know they can't trust you with what they told you, they won't come back to you. Right. Yep. It's just how it works. That's why I won't. You know? If someone says, Jeff, I don't want to share a location, exactly. or, you know, that's... share my name or something, I, I'll say, you know, then don't. Share what exactly. you want and don't share exactly. what you don't want, you know? Exactly. Because there's many reasons why people do that. Yeah. I found out the hard way. Yeah. Why you have to sometimes, you can't disclose a lot of things. It's just the way it is. Because you might not ever get that information again. And exactly. no one will talk to you. Yeah. You know? It's, it's just like a police investigator. It's an informant. They will never get information again. Yep. You know, that's just how researching works. It's a it's just how it works. I'm not saying everything's hidden. There's a like I said, there's a lot of things I don't know. There's a lot of things other people know a lot more than I do. Yeah. 
but I'm pretty confident in my tracking and my filming where I know where a lot of these creatures are still, still are, Yeah. you know, I'm just, I'm not as versed in the missing, though I keep track of it. I'm not an investigator per se in that. Yeah, you know, like me, I, I can't. Really, I, I couldn't go out in the woods with a camera and do what you do. You know, I, I, I'd be. Uh, you probably could. I, I mean, if you wanted to start taking that avenue, I'm sure you could. You wouldn't have a, a very problem with it. You know. Well, I appreciate yeah. that. I do. And, Listen, uh, we gotta end this because I, I don't, I don't want to. Um, I don't want to miss any any i only have x amount of time that i can record but um i want to thank you and let you know how much i appreciate this and i know that the majority of my audience is appreciative as well so thank you for and i think yeah and i think a lot of your audience is they are quite uh respectful Definitely. I, you know, it, it's you're going to get people with opinions and people want to know uh, certain evidence is never going to be accepted. Right. And people are people. They're going to they're free to entitled to their opinion. It is America. Yeah. You know, yep. and they have a constitutional right to give their opinion. Exactly. Just like I have a constitutional right to come out and present evidence. Though it might not be taken as evidence, you know, yeah. it has to be criticized, you know. I but agree. on that note, yes, I do very much appreciate you giving me or asking me to come on and give me time to talk. Well, thank you. And uh, <clears throat> don't hang up. Um, I want to talk to you for a few minutes afterward. But it was wonderful awesome. having you on, my friend. Hey, likewise. Blessings. All right, guys, that is the interview with Kirk. And uh, it was honestly a pleasure of mine to even even be able to interview a man who uh, really left the community. And I hope that with the respect and dignity that I, I gave him, that he is willing to come back. Because honestly, we need... Our community needs more people like Kirk Stokes. Um, people who have been doing it for years that 
that know how to do it, that know that it's not about having your name in a book, having, you know, fame. This isn't a fame science. Science isn't meant for fame. Science is, is curiosity. It is finding something that we are told does not exist, you know, um, and this guy is, this guy is top notch in my eyes, top notch. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. That was his video that he took. Um, I know some people ridicule it, but to me, that video is right up there with Scott Carpenter's. And I know people talk about Scott Carpenter's video like it is the Holy Grail. And I think Kirk's is better. And I'm not insulting Mr. Carpenter. Uh, tragic loss to the community. But, you know, this video to me is something special. So with that being said, thank you for supporting the channel. I hope you're so I hope you all enjoyed this as much as I did because I, I could listen to Kirk talk for, for hours. Him and Kunbo, no doubt. Anyway, guys, please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, our pets, our family, and friends. These creatures are real. They are out there. They are dangerous. Share this information with those you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for the truth, and God bless.